So I wanted to show you a piece of software called Music Lab and Music Lab is made by Google and it's got various different tools which are really useful for learning about music and if you search for Music Lab you'll see here Chrome Music Lab and what I really like about it is it works on any computer and it also works on any phone or tablet with a browser so it's got lots of different tools here you can see we'll just scroll up and down I think there's 13 of them. But yeah, we've got Song Maker, we've got Rhythm, Spectrogram, etc. But today we're going to do this one down here, second row. It's called Melody Maker. And what Melody Maker is, it's, it's what's known as a grid sequencer. So you can see that there are eight columns going across like this, and there are 14 rows going up and down like this. And each column going across represents a moment in time. So it will basically pass across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and play whatever note is selected. And if you go up and down, you get different pitches of note. You've got low pitch notes down here, and you've got high pitch notes up here. And if I just click this lowest one here, you'll hear what is the root note of a major scale. So if I just play here, you can see it goes across, and it comes back. So Melody Maker allows us to have a repeating pattern, and a repeating pattern in music is known as an ostinato, or sometimes known as a loop. So with an ostinato, you have a bunch of notes, either a melody or it could be a rhythm. In this particular case, it is a rhythm with notes as <laughs> a melody. And you can actually alter the notes as you go along. And in minimalistic music, this is often used as an idea. You start with one or two notes, and then you use a process called note addition. And as you probably know from maths, addition is about adding things. So we can add notes. You can see at this point, we now have eight notes. Every single column has a note allocated to it. And what we can then start to do is we can start to morph them into other things. You can change some of the notes as it goes along. And depending on the notes that you change, it can really change the character of the entire ostinato. But it still feels part of the same sort of cohesive whole. Also notice the colors are shared by the same notes and if you drop them down by an octave in other words go down eight notes one two three four five six seven eight you have a note which sounds very similar but it's just lower in pitch and that's known as an octave which is eight notes down here's a note that's eight notes up from this one let's evolve them some more And then you can subtract notes by taking notes away. And so on. Now this function here is quite cool. It allows you to add a second layer of notes. So for example, I'm just gonna make a little ostinato here which uses few notes like this, play it, and if I click on this, then it allows me to add a second layer of notes on top. Notice how each time I click on a note, let's say I click on this note here, it will add it two beats later to the next one. So you get this sort of echo effect. And you can still use note addition and subtraction.
next to that little echo thing, we've got a uh, tempo control. So you can see from sw slow, sort of a walking pace, to a running pace. So I'll just put a little simple ostinato in. Play it. And I can speed it up. At the moment, it's 120 beats per minute. In other words, if we were to count along, we'd see that there are 120 beats in one minute. I'm just going to drag that to the right, and it's going to speed up, playing at a quicker tempo, all the way up to 200 beats per minute. That's quite fast. Let's bring it all the way down, see how far it goes. 70 beats per minute. Quite slow. You can adjust it to wherever you would like your particular ostinato to be. Okay, look forward to seeing what you come up with.